Oh, good afternoon, everybody. And it's a great joy again for our webinar that we continue our series of the presentations, lectures about Ayurveda and yoga. And with us um, today is our dear Ayurvedic doctor from India. And her name is Dr. Chitrangana Chauhan, and she is a, a medical doctor also and a specialist in the field of uh, psychiatry, Ayurveda and psychiatry. And today uh, we will um, hear how by Ayurveda you can handle depression. And this is very timely theme because all the happenings which is going around us uh, even that COVID pandemic and, uh, and this war and everything and all the situation is uh, conducive to develop depression in the people. And now we will hear how Ayurveda can help us in that sense. And Dr. Chitangana Chauhan is an Ayurveda and pulse diagnosis expert from India. And she is a gold medalist and a president worthy. Hmm? And... Uh, <clears throat> Um, she is, was trained under the government of India Ayurveda system of medicine in the Gujarat Ayurveda University, National Institute of Mental Health and Neuroscience, Government of India, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, National Institute of Social Defense, and Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Science. With a clinical experience of over 10 years, she is currently offering consultations across Croatia and teaching Ayurveda through various workshops at uh, Shri Shri Ayurveda Croatia. So thank you very much for being with us uh, this afternoon. And uh, I would like to um, invite His Excellency, Ambassador of India in Croatia, Raj Kumar Srivastava, to address uh, this uh, workshop, this uh, webinar. Uh, Your Excellency, yes. <clears throat> Namaskar. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, organizing this uh, useful uh, webinar, as you normally do now, at least once in two weeks. And today the theme is about uh, depression and Ayurveda. I think, yes, as you mentioned, that this is a very time-relevant topic. Uh, it's always relevant to discuss such issues, but especially in these times, it might be immediately relevant for many people. So I think, and we have the uh, fortunate situation that we have an expert uh, right now from India in Croatia, even though we are doing it virtually, but it's always good to know that somebody is actually available, not by distance, but actually in near pro proximity. So Dr. Chitrangna Chauhan being present in Croatia would also provide an opportunity for those who are attending today. If they consider there's a possibility to meet her and uh, physically take uh, uh, prescriptions and maybe the pulse reading, uh, which she has been doing uh, quite regularly in the time she has come to Croatia. Uh, many of the people would probably not uh, know that she arrived in Croatia on 2nd of November 2021, uh, the day which we celebrate as the World Ayurveda Day. So there is some bit of uh, interesting coincidence of her visit to Croatia uh, on the day that she arrived was the World Ayurveda Day. And naturally, I believe that there have been a lot of uh, positive resonance she has received in her consultations in Croatia in different parts of Croatia, not only in Zagreb. I know that we had organized a very uh, interesting one week long session in Opatia and Sarkvenitsa in the middle of February. And uh, I personally was there on one of the days where we celebrated India in Opatia for health and wellness. And I could see that people there had benefited directly through the consultation she had provided. Uh, so I think it's important that our effort has been to provide this universal wisdom and uh, 
uh, knowledge uh, to the people in Croatia who are, some of them are like you, are very much knowledgeable about it, but there are others who are on the edge, uh, trying to know, but not having enough, uh, what you call knowledge uh, resources. So here we have an example of Dr. Chitrangna Chauhan present here. She was also present in our interesting International Women's Day celebration uh, in the University of Zagreb just two days back, where she uh, gave a small presentation about uh, the importance of Ayurveda and the lessons we can learn for women health. So I think uh, it will be very useful to see in today's context uh, how Ayurveda can be useful in uh, controlling the depression and have the positive energy towards uh, living the life as it is in the moment without being concerned too much about what is happening around uh, because ultimately half of the things are solved if you are mentally sound. Uh, it's the anxiety which we create. They say that 90% of the anxiety actually doesn't take place. It's only our making that we consider the future to be bleak which normally doesn't happen, but we make our present bleak because we think about future in anxious way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And uh, now I would like uh, Dr. Chitangana Chauhan to give us her uh, knowledge. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Yadrankuji. On behalf of uh, Shri Shri Ayurveda Croatia, I would like to thank His Excellency Rajkumar Srivastava sir for giving me the opportunity to spread awareness on the most discussed topics of the time. And as we all know, ever since the, this deadly pandemic has started, mental health has been the talk of the town everywhere. I mean, uh, over all the social media platforms, over offline, online, every mode, every healthcare individual, mental health professional has, try, has been trying to uh, give their best efforts to promote uh, mental health and create awareness amongst the masses. And I wish all of you a very warm good evening. I welcome you all for today's session. And uh, I hope that uh, you all would be benefited and uh, you know, this time is really, is, is the, now the times have really changed because there was a time back when I took up psychiatry for my MD studies. And at that time, everybody was like, psychiatry, psychiatry. And it was really considered as a taboo to visit a psychiatrist in those days. But now uh, we are really fortunate that uh, more and more awareness is being created. And one such example is, this uh, great initiative by our Indian embassy to spread awareness regarding mental health and Ayurveda. And uh, it's really a pleasure to see all the Ayurveda enthusiasts today. And I am really honored to be amongst all of you. So in today's session, we will talk about uh, certain aspects of Ayurveda and depression, practical aspects of depression, how a person suffering from depression actually feels, what he is going through, what are his feelings, and what we as an individual can do to help them, to support them, and uh, what are the health systems, what are the, what are the health systems and Ayurveda offering to such individuals. So uh, let me have a look at all of you. Can I just have a few more videos on? Okay. Okay. So now we will begin with, uh, let's just uh, know what is mental health because everyone keeps talking mental health, depression, anxiety. Let's evaluate ourselves. So mental health is, is a framework wherein we understand our own potentials, where we can identify our own potentials. We can deal with the daily normal stresses of life and we can contribute something productive to the society. If we can do all these, then we are much in alignment with our mind and we are healthy. Now, mental health is not something like physical health that it's seen, you know, you, got, you get a cut or you have a headache or something which is visible. Mental health is invisible. And that's why it took so much of time for it to come into 
come onto some social media platforms. You know, a person going through depression can fake a smile. A person having anxiety can stay confident, can absolutely look confident. Someone having depression can have an absolutely normal, productive day, but at the end of the day, when he comes back to home, he can collapse. There are times when, you know, someone asks a person, how are you feeling? And the person says, I'm fine, I'm normal. But there would be tears in his eyes. This is depression. It's not as portrayed in certain common pictures, a person crying or a person trying to commit suicide is depression. No, a person with a very bright smile, with the most productive day, with having a lot of friends can also be depressed because mental illness is absolutely invisible. Now let's get on the same wavelength as what actually mental illness like depression is. So depression is a mental, is a huge mental illness. It's a complex feature where a person feels numb, where, where a person feels completely lost and he's not in touch with the reality. He feels numb in himself. He loses all the contact and there is a lot of inertia developed. Now, although it is a significant mental ailment, but it produces physical features as well. Like a person with depression may have uh, tremors and may have palpitations. A person has a lot of hopelessness, worthlessness, and a feeling of helplessness. There are fluctuations with the weight. A person's weight could increase or decrease. And Ayurveda has given significant, significant importance to mind because Ayurveda says that you are not considered healthy if you do not have a healthy mind. If you are not happy with yourself, if you are not contributing productively, you're not mentally healthy. So now uh, when we talk about all this, we get a strong feeling that, yes, this is something which is really debilitating. And we get a feeling that we should help someone who is you know, passing through a tough time or who is struggling with depression. But then we also do need to understand that how to actually identify whether a person is going through certain kind of abnormal mental health. So whenever, there, whenever you find that there is some kind of alteration in person's behavior or whether the person is very superficial in his behavior, he doesn't want to have deep conversations. When there is a very superficial communication the person doesn't have eye contact with us. And the person, of course, earlier used to have, but now doesn't have. And the body language is very much uncomfortable. The person does fidgeting or something, ringling movements with the hands or something, some kind of uncomfortable movements. Whenever we observe, we must understand that there is something which is abnormal with the person's mental health. They do this so as to hide their feelings and so as not to expose it to others. And depression feels like, uh, you know, a person with depression feels like we are drowning. The person is drowning and the entire world is breathing. The person feels like only I am sinking and the world is breathing. And the person says that, you know, there was a time when I was when I was very healthy, there was a time when I was very bubbly and I had a lot of friends and I was very bubbly and I used to make others laugh. Everybody used to enjoy my company, but I'm not like this anymore. And there are times when, you know, a person gets so scared to share their feelings with others because uh, they feel that earlier I was a person who was very funny, you know, very much socializing. And if I say this now to people, what would they think about me? Or what would, they, uh, what would they feel that how can I get this? I was such an energetic person. There is no way I can get it. Such kind of thoughts put more pressure to the person who is struggling with depression. And then there is a lot of energy which is spent upon faking the smile or faking the energy or, you know, uh, they, the person with depression 
tends to get into a survival mode much more than living in the uh, you know living in the present mode he's much more into a survival mode and that takes a lot of efforts of the person you know uh, it said that tamas you know tamas is uh, something which causes inertia that is at it, at its peak in in a case of depression and the person feels so much lost and the person feels worthless that i i am good for nothing nothing can save me you know nothing good is happening to me but everyone around me is very happy why only such things why only negative things are happening to me so if i i request all of you all the ayurveda enthusiasts present here i request you that if at all you come across someone who is passing through this tough phase or you feel that someone has abnormal mental health please refer them to a mental health professional because that could be the greatest help you would do ever do to them you know a person uh, with depression or low moods he goes through various kinds of fatigue throughout the day you know you must have seen they say that we are tired and they are tired not because of physical activity a person can sit at a place and still feel tired when he is depressed because he has lots and lots of negative thoughts going on into his mind we say it as depression fatigue and constantly the mind of the person is fighting with this uh, negative thoughts you know and just trying to be in the moment always struggling constant fear also one more kind of fatigue which a person of depression faces is the future fatigue although they feel numb but they are extremely anxious about what is going to happen next and they are very much skeptic whatever features we are discussing it's it's not that everyone has all of them no it's not like that features of depression are very much different in all the individuals they are very much subjective and the intensity of the features intensity of the symptoms may also vary depending upon like ayurveda talks about depending upon the prakruti of a person the basic constitution of the person suppose if a person is kapha prakruti you know a, a person more dominant with kapha energy then it becomes really tough for that kind of individual to come out of an episode of depression and of course a professional intervention for a long period of time is must recommended and also you would come across a uh, certain people fighting depression and they would be really angry sometimes we feel that come on this is not the reaction you give to some situation like this but we need to understand that they are in a constant survival mode the individual in, is in a constant mode of just being alive and being present and they feel so much guilt about themselves that they are not progressing in their life and all their energy is just spent upon living all their energy is spent upon faking a smile or faking something which they have to in front of in front of people in front of their friends and because of this over a period of time they have lot of sensory overload and then when there is a minute a very minute trigger it just comes out there is an emotional explosion and it just comes out and they become so angry whereas for other individuals that trigger would be really small and it wouldn't trigger uh, anger for them but for the individuals suffering with depression it's really it's really something a pen and and they are blown it is because of piling up of emotions for a long period of time now the question comes why do they pile the emotions for a long period of time see please understand that it's it's not something which they want to do which an individual wants to do no individual wants to come out of the situation but is unable to i will tell you the reason as well but uh, we need to understand that depression isn't always at 3 am you know generally 
people say and youngsters say that depression is an it is an illness of 3 a.m. But no, it's not. It, it can happen even when you know you are surrounded by crowd or even when you are very much lovable even when you get a lot of attention even then you can you can feel depressed even when you have a lot of dms pouring in a lot of likes to your posts or a lot of people appreciating your efforts and uh, you know you are very productive even then you can be depressed you can be depressed right before a party suppose you have a birthday party in your house and suddenly you may feel depressed because you are anticipating the kind of efforts you have to make to fake yourself into the social circle and that takes away a lot of conscious efforts of an individual and also a lot of times uh, certain situations or uh, in certain se casual sentences people hurt uh, the individual suffering from depression saying that you're faking it or it's just grief it will pass it's just a phase it will pass or you know it's temporary no such statements are considered little negative for an individual who is suffering from depression because people do not fake being in depression they fake being okay they fake being normal amongst us they fake being okay normal in the society and we must understand it you must have seen um, sometimes a person is always with his mobile of course there are cases of mobile addiction that is different but a person is always occupied in his mobile always into his mobile and sometimes a person is often sleeping sleeping constant the sleeping hours are increasing now what are these these are not normal these are not normal tendencies right this is something this is a survive survival strategy a person is adopting the person is adopting the survive survival strategy so as to not come into contact with the reality you know he knows that uh, since he knows that it would be tough for him to face the world that's the reason he's just trying to hide himself behind the phone or sleeping a lot plenty of times uh, parents bring their kids to us and they say these things that you know he is not eating properly now in these days and he's only sleeping and he's only with the mobile on complete evaluation we get to know that the child is depressed so it's not it's not something to be ignored of course these signs and symptoms must be taken into consideration of course even when you people come out come into contact with somebody uh, passing through this please understand that this is something which is really not normal and a person with a uh, depression has a lot of positive traits also you must be thinking for a long time she is just telling that person has this has that has just into a survival mode or faking the smile or using lot of energy but there's nothing positive there is there are lots of positive points with a person who is suffering from depression you know such individuals are more emotionally available to us whenever we need some kind of help they are very much available and they are ready to help at any time because they can understand that at this particular time there is an emotional need for the for the other individual and they are very empathetic very much soft and gentle in nature and always considerate they are very much sensitive about how the other person would feel and you know Uh, if i said this and whether does it make a normal sense does it make a proper sense so this is uh, what uh, is a general understanding of what a person with depression goes through and uh, uh, till here is it is it clear enough and is it understandable okay thank you thank you for so now we would begin with what specific strategies are indicated in ayurveda to help an individual with this state so ayurveda says that the foremost therapy for this is uh, satvavajay chikitsa 
now uh, now this is a sanskrit name it is very complex i understand this is similar to cognitive behavioral therapy what we do in present times um, satvavaja therapy was done back then back 5000 years ago when ayurveda when ayurveda evolved so it's it it means that we need to increase uh, we need to actually increase the sattva of a person let's go a little back what is sattva in ayurveda there are three mental faculties sattva rajas and tamas so sattva is a neutral state is a, it is a state of positiveness it is a state of uh, state the optimum state of mental health that is sattva state and tamas is the state where there is a lot of inertia like uh, we can observe in the cases of depression and rajas is the state of hyperactivity of the mind you know sometimes you would have seen uh, you would have seen that uh, you are you are very anxious you are constantly thinking about about what's going to happen next whether the situation would turn up good how would i do and constant that is a that is a symbolic representation of rajas working in your mind your rajas is high at this time so when tamas is extremely high person tends to be numb and there is a lot of fear of failure he feels that he cannot cannot ever do anything so this is the basic understanding of ayurveda and ayurveda says that sadness uh a constant sadness for a long time is the root cause of majority of the illnesses of human race the sanskrit quote goes like vishado roga vardhananam which means that when we are sad or when we are feeling low low mood is the basic cause for uh, for increase of any kind of physical or mental ailments in our, in, in the human body a similar quote you would find in bhagavad gita also and uh, what to do to get over this kind of situations see the uh, the first thing is please seek for help or if if you see somebody please try to help them uh, through some professional guidances and also uh, when we do like coming back to the sattva vajra therapy after the sattva rajas tamas in sattva vajra therapy in the cognitive behavioral therapy of ayurveda we increase the sattva level of a person and that's how we make him feel more confident about his potentials we make him identify what exactly the individual is what are his own major potentials what are the good things in him and when he realizes that when he knows when he when he can accept his own reality when he knows what are his qualities what are his draw his drawbacks what are his strengths what are his threats we make him work upon it and the situation gets really better of course in minor cases of depression it works really well but for the chronic cases or for the cases uh, which are in the depressive epi severe uh, depressive episodes we need to administer certain kinds of ayurvedic supplements as well because there are various herbs which which modulate uh, the vata and the pitta in the mind and also the sattva rajas and tamas can be maintained with certain kinds of nootropic drugs nootropic drugs are the special a class of drugs in ayurveda which work especially for mental ailments and for boosting our cognitive functions now on a preventive end if we could maintain or if we could stay away from the causative factors of depression it would be it would be of course like we say prevention is better than cure so it would be the best side now what to do for being on the preventive end we have to follow the ayurvedic regimen daily regimen in ayurveda a proper daily regimen is mentioned like you have to wake up at least 45 minutes prior to the sunrise which is known as the brahma muhurta 
So if we wake up in the Brahma Murata, it has its own great benefits. You know, when we wake up in the Brahma Murata, our body, our mind gets in sync with the with the rhythms of the nature. Because, like you know, we are what the nature is. We are five elements, and the nature nature is five elements. We are five elements. We got them from the nature. So that's how it's really important for our body to be in sync with the rhythms of the nature, with the circadian rhythms. So when we wake up in the morning with the rising sun, it is a it is something which is beneficial for our mental as well as our physical health. It makes one extremely happy, and you are joyous throughout the day. It's kind of boosting certain happy hormones in you. You know, your sattva is really high in morning, and that's why. it said that that particular time is very good for meditation according to the ayurveda clock and you are very creative and uh, then after that make a proper schedule of the day like after that you have to you know take care of your oral hygiene of of your gums and then of your eyes splash water into your eyes in the morning and then you're asked to massage yourself with certain oils now if you ever notice that you're facing certain kinds of low moods or you're not feeling so well with your mental health try using mustard oil mustard oil is really good when you apply it on the skin and then take a shower after it it is it is considered beneficial in the cases of depression now mustard oil is a kind of home remedy when we talk about other oils chandan bala lakshadi oil ashwagandha the oil brahmi oil all these oils are very beneficial for a kind of relaxation and rejuvenation after abhyanga and like after massage and then a and then a shower you need to meditate or you need to worship because faith is something which gives you lots of confidence and and as we all know there is a supreme power which is always with us so we need to respect and honor the supreme power when you do that you have lots and lots of confidence in you and then you start your day you know and also one thing which i really like in the ayurvedic regimen is after taking shower you need to uh, you need to wear certain kind of fragrances it's given lot of importance in ayurveda to wear fragrances because it says that it it boosts your mental health and it gives you lot of confidence so we all can do that we can choose our favorite fragrances and when we can start our day with that and of course uh, dressing when when it comes to dressing ayurveda says that you should dress according to the seasons but pure and uh, pure and a hygienic kind of a dressing which is compatible for your skin kind is very good and you feel more confident and i totally agree because you must have seen that the days when when you wear your favorite dress how confident you are and when you do your hair well and when when you when you dress up according to what you like you feel so confident right so these are some small things which we can take care in our everyday life now about the food there are certain foods which are which are really healthy for our mind for example almonds very basic very basic no we all have it in our house and we can all use it but there is a, there is a technique to use almond you have to use it by soaking it when you soak it you can soak a uh, few almonds like five almonds at night and in the morning remove the skin from the almonds and have them this is very good for your for relaxing your mind and for increasing your cognitive abilities cow milk is also considered to provide uh, relief with the patients of depression or in the in, in increasing the intelligence but suppose if you are uh, allergic to milk then please do not consume it other alternates are blueberries and uh, certain kind of seasonal fruits and pumpkin pumpkin is pumpkin is you know a miracle drug for the patients of depression i tell you and how you have to use it you can either use pumpkin seeds or uh, you can have 
you know, what you can do is you can roast pumpkin seeds and store them in a container. And uh, you can have one teaspoon pumpkin seeds every day. Also, if you don't like seeds, you can have pumpkin soup. One bowl every day. I'm, I, I'm not sure if we get ash gourd here, but ash gourd is also considered uh, very healthy for, for relieving depression. And uh, walnuts, of course. Now, one technique which, which helps an individual with depression is marma. Have you heard about the name marma? Okay, okay. See, we have uh, almost 108 energy points in our body. And they are known as marma. What happens is, over a period of time, when we are like when we are like stressed, or of course in the depression, we have lots and lots of accumulations of our emotions. So these energy points they tend to get blocked, and our circulatory energy doesn't flow, is not able to flow so well. And that's when we feel more depressed and we feel more low energy. But there is a technique where we manipulate these marma points, in, these energy points in certain particular way and the, these emotional blocks are relieved. So when these emotional blocks are relieved, the energy flows really well and you feel a boost. You feel so good with your mind. But this is not the only thing which a person has to do. This is in combination with all the other things. So it is a kind of holistic approach for the treatment of depression. Also certain procedures in Ayurveda like Nasyam. Uh, nasyam means uh, there are specialized medicated oils which are instilled through the nose because in Ayurveda, nose is considered as the gateway to our head. Now there is a Sanskrit quote which goes like Nasahi Shiraso Dwaram, which means that our nose is the gateway to our brain and to our mind. So to relieve the symptoms of depression, it is one of the best treatments to instill certain kinds of uh, oils through the nose. And then, you know, you have to just bend your head back and instill the drops of oils. And once it comes to the mouth, you can just spit it off. If it doesn't come to your mouth also, really fine, no worries. But the Oils change because when we check the pulse, we check the degree of variations, like how much doshas are vitiated, how much vata, pitta and kapha are imbalanced. And based on that, the oil is selected. And then you see a proper, like you see kind of instant result in the in patients, in a person's mood. Also, something to, you know, when someone says, you, you know, I'm really feeling very bad, I'm feeling so depressed, you would think, what, what should I suggest? I'll tell you what to suggest. You can ask them to do Bhastrika Pranayama. Uh, do you know what is Bhastrika Pranayama? Can, I, can you raise your fingers and let me know? Okay, great, great, perfect. So, so we have really enthusiastic audience of Ayurveda. Okay, I will just demonstrate it once how to do Bastrika Pranayama so that it's, uh, it's, it's more clear also. And see, we have to hold our fists near to our shoulders. Can we do it? If, if you like it. We can hold it, hold our fist near to, near to our shoulders, drop your shoulders loose and drop your arms also very loose. Just keep them like this. And then with a deep and forceful inhalation, we would take our hands up. And with the deep and forceful exhalation, we would bring our hands down. I will show you. You can use a tissue if you want. Okay, great. Wonderful, wonderful. You are doing really nice. So this is Bastrika Pranayama and this is something which gives instant boost of energy. Whenever a person of depression or even a normal healthy individual, whenever feels low in energy, please do 20 Bastrika. Take a pause of a minute or a few seconds and again do 
20 rounds of Bastrika and there you go, you're ready. And it's so effective. This is one technique which you can do. Now talking about mudra. I don't know, mudras are really my favorite and I see that a lot of clients who come to me, it's their favorite as well. I've seen a I've seen lot of uh, clients practicing, already practicing mudras. They know so many mudras. So I know Croatia is, Croatia has a lot of knowledge about mudras. Now I know that. So the mudra, which is really good for depression is this one. You can do this. This is Prithvi Mudra. What you have to do is, I will show it near the camera. Take your ring finger, the top of the ring finger and the top of the thumb. They touch together. Yes, this is Prithvi Mudra. Perfect. Now, few things which we need to be really careful while doing Mudra is our fingers need to be really relaxed. No undue pressure. No touching the points really hard. Very relaxed. And just find some nice, comfortable spot in your house, some nice couch or some nice, your favorite spot, whichever you like. Find that spot, take a nice back support and sit comfortably. And you can fold your legs up in the lotus position. Drop your shoulders, close your eyes and then keep this gesture on your thighs and be in this position for 10 minutes. This is really beneficial. And one thing which should not be forgotten is sunlight exposure. You know, God has given us certain natural remedies. Like I said, five elements in the body, in the nature. So something which really works quick for depression is sunlight. And we are fortunate enough that here in Croatia, we have ample amount of sunlight. You know, there, are, there are a lot of days when we have good sunlight. So uh, we all can practice it and we can advise it to someone who is you know, not feeling so good or feeling low. At least 30 minutes of sunlight exposure every day. And if at all you're feeling well, you know, if you are, if someone is in, uh, is in a chronic state of depression, then it can go up to 45 minutes as well. This can give you a nice good mood. So I, um, I think I cleared all the basic uh, things about depression and Ayurveda. And uh, I would like to invite a few questions. You all are most welcome to ask me a few questions or doubts if you would like to. Cam, Hello. Go Could you? Oh no, there's somebody else. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you. Those were some really good tips. How to um, see that somebody may suffer from it, and also I really like the, um, the advices you gave with the daily routine and something more. Uh, you mentioned fragrances, and I'm just curious if there is something that you could immediately advise in terms of like mood lifting, maybe irrespective of like the, the dosha of the individual. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. And thank you for this nice question, because this is really important and it could benefit all of our uh, viewers. So uh, some fragrances are like jasmine fragrance. It is common and uh, it's, it's suited for all the kinds of doshas. Tea tree fragrance. Tea tree. Eucalyptus fragrance. And a petrichor. Petrichor is the fragrance which, uh, you know, when the first uh, rain comes to the earth, the earth, uh, you know, reveals some kind of very nice soothing aroma. And that is petrichor. And petrichor is extremely beneficial for lifting our moods.
uh, there was one more uh, person asking can you please come up uh, yes hello it's stella i just um, uh, would like also to thank you for very very useful tips and um, i don't know why um, you uh, you call it depression is 3 a.m does it mean because i know a friend who is depressed and she wakes up quite early and but on the other hand you say that uh, depressed people are empathic but she is really not she's she's quite um not she's quite she's looking um she takes care of herself she's worried about herself you know rather than uh, anybody else around her at the moment Okay, okay. That's again a really nice question, Stella. And uh, I would like to clear that whatever uh, things we discussed about, like 3 a.m. or, you know, uh, the person doesn't take care or takes care or empathetic. See, these are, like I said, these are the common things which we can notice. Now, they are very subjective. A person doesn't choose the symptoms of depression. They are very subjective. And one symptom can be present in one and not in other. Uh, one person can be, you know, very much, very much emotionally available and other person could not, could be not. Or maybe he's not having only depression and he's having some other coinciding uh, mental ailment as well, like bipolar or some kind of anxiety which is present along with depression or some kind of mania being developed or some kind of other eating disorder or then you know there, there could be some comorbidity as well that is why mental ailments needs to be thoroughly examined and thoroughly investigated only then we can prescribe something uh thank you and also could you tell us where where do you practice where you base how you uh, operate uh, uh, with your consultations and everything yes yes tell us uh, I, I presently I am working at Sri Sri Ayurveda Croatia. We are based in Zagreb, and uh, we carry out consultations over entire Dalmatia coasts once in two months. We go to Dubrovnik, Makarska, and the Split, Zadar, and also we we go to Istria, Ula, Porec, Rijeka, and uh, we also go to Kvarne, which which uh, is, was a great opportunity given to us by the Indian Embassy. And uh, we went there to Opatya and uh, Thalassotherapia, Sri Kvanitsa. We would be soon visiting Osiak. So any of the cities, wherever, whichever cities you are close by, you can, uh, you can uh, meet us in person there. And uh, you can check our website. Shishi, uh www.artofliving.hr and Sri Sri Ayurveda Croatia. We have a page on the Instagram and as well as on Facebook. So it would be a pleasure if you join. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stella. Any more questions? I see here on chat on, on chat there is one question if somebody doesn't want to take uh, any suggestion okay uh, should we continue or to stop okay great this is again a very practical question because this is what the family members face you know when uh, i can really relate to it because when one person in a family suffers from depression it's the entire family which is affected so yes, when you feel that a person is not following, uh, like I mentioned, please refer them to a mental health professional or you can bring them to us. And then it's our job to make them explain and to make them follow. Is it, is it clear? Yes, thank you.
Yes, if there is any more questions, this is a um, beautiful opportunity to ask such expert and uh, Dr. Okay, Chitangan no gave beautiful presentation on depression. Thank you. Thank you so much. If nobody asks, I can <laughs> continue to ask questions. You mentioned some of the uh, neurotropics. Nootropics. Um, nootropics, yeah. I'm, I'm aware of ashwagandha, for instance, which I think is in that category. Could you mention some others? Or you feel they're like, they should only be taken after like a proper consultation? Okay. Uh, I would recommend that it's better if you take after, if someone takes after a proper consultation, because uh, it's, it's a myth that, you know, Ayurveda medicines do not produce side effects. They do have side effects if you do not take according to the proper uh, dosha by after the proper dosha examination. I can, of course, I will tell you the names of the other new, nootropic drugs. So they are Brahmi, Silastris paniculatus, that is Shankapushpi, Jatamamsi is there, Nordostaka is Jatamamsi, and uh, some other combinations like Medhirasaina, Nara, and Kalpa, they have all the kinds of nootropics added to it. Tagara is again one good nootropic, but uh, it's better to, you know, it's the best to take after a pulse diagnosis or a consultation with an Ayurveda physician. Thank you, Dr. Um, Dr. G. I'm sorry, I, I'm not familiar with your na name yet, but uh, it was a wonderful uh, presentation. And um, I, I have one question, but before I, uh, I ask you this question, I would like to ask you something. Since you've been in Croatia for several months and you recommended to us to eat pumpkin in case of depression, have you tried pumpkin oil? Would you, you know, the Croatia is, is, is one of the few places where they make this amazing pumpkin oil. Okay. And um, I think all of us know about it, but uh, I just wanted to tell you this because uh, perhaps you haven't uh, tasted it yet. Yes, Tamara, I am so thankful to you for enhancing my knowledge because I absolutely did not know it. And um, this is a great addition to my knowledge. And thank you so much for sharing this. I would yeah. definitely try it. And please do, do so because um, um, the area north of Croatia is very famous for that um, mm -hmm. oil. And it's really, really powerful and very tasty. Right. So, <laughs> definitely now this is something which is at my, at my priority mm, okay so um my question is related to uh okay so i am croatian but i live in the north of europe so uh, we have a lot of uh, seasonal depression yes okay so uh of course all this uh, would apply for seasonal depression but i was wondering if you had something uh, additional to uh, yes to give us uh, your, your uh, lovely uh, advice for that. Yes, seasonal depression, cyclic depressions, uh, of course, we have a lot. And I didn't mention about it because that season was over and we are towards the spring, so I skipped that part. But anyway, yes, it is. And uh, mostly like beginning of the December and all of the cyclic depressions, they start, the seasonal ones. What you have to do is please continue Nasyam for three months and also there, there are certain powerful combinations of herbal powders available, which we call as Udvartanam powders, like dry massage powders. Though the, the powder massage has to be done with that, those powders and they are like, they boost up the mood. That's, that's the best thing what we can do. Wow, and, do, and which uh, herb would you, would you uh, recommend for Udvartana? Yes, Udvartana herbs are kola, kulatha, like it's a combination, like combination of more than 12, uh, 12 herbs with warm potency. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And along with that, these other things have to be followed. Yes, indeed. They also use, uh, uh, um, I mean, this is modern te technology, okay, but um, they use the light 
the, the lamps to enhance also a good mood and uh, I don't yes. know. <laughs> yes, that is a light radiation frequency therapy. Yes, that also is used. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you. Dr. Chitrangana, thank you very much for your beautiful presentation. Thank and you so uh, as you said, also, I just get reminded um, about the milk from the cow, cow's milk, that it's um, good. And um, But uh, as we know, today we have the cows in a very depressive condition. So I would recommend not to drink <laughs> milk from the depressive cows which are living in un, un uh, human, not human, but I want to say, uh, the conditions which is not uh, at all in accord with any teaching of yoga and Ayurveda, but uh, to drink milk from the happy cow. Yes. This is uh, bringing out from depression. And happy cow is the cow which is living in nature and free and uh, taking the grass and uh, all medicinal plants eating and creating the essence of the all medicinal plants in the milk. So we need to um, actually all the knowledge of Ayurveda is to bring us back to nature, to be natural, because tendency of today life is uh, instant, everything and manufactured and uh, produced in a not uh, satvic way we can say so we need to maintain and motivate people to create the farms where the happy cows will be living and then if the cows are happy then the people will be happy if the people are torturing the animals there is no happiness for the people because and then there will be all mental illnesses and depressions and everything and if we create violence to the nature then we are viol violating ourselves and hurting ourselves and uh, our soul cannot be happy and uh, one thing regarding yoga uh, is uh, one aspect of our life energy which is called udana Yes. of the prana, like udana, mental, in the mental aspect, or on the physical level, udana vayu. Ud means to move up, upwards. And uh, we know depression is feeling low. You feel low mentally. <laughs> and uh, if you have enthusiasm, if you find something, as you said, in, beautiful in your lecture, something we need to find in our life to feel happy over that and to feel enthusiastic. And, uh, and this is uh, something which is uh, moving us upwards. And then that Udana is strengthened in our consciousness. And then we are getting out from depression. There is no sense of depression. And then especially to be enthusiastic about the life. And you know, there, is, there were some occasions, some religious people which are um, you can find always there is something to be about God, to be enthusiastic about anything, about sun, about the stars, about the universe. <laughs> and uh, when you go in that direction, uh, that those saints were so much full of enthusiasm and surrender and upliftment, hmm? mental upliftment, so that their body started to raise up from the ground. Why? Because the Udana, when it becomes mentally strong, then it is at the same time physically strong. And on the physical level, it is anti-gravity force, which is pushing you upwards. So I would also recommend those who practice asana, especially the yoga, when they are practicing, they should feel contact with the ground and feel that reactive force from the ground passing through their body. Because with the pressure, they create the force to the ground. But then the planet Earth is pushing us back up and become, be conscious of that inner force moving you upwards in your joints, streaming upwards in your body. And then this is strengthening Udaya, Udana Vayu on the physical level and consequences that Udana on the mental gets strengthened. Mm -hmm. Then that's why all this warrior position and all these positions are very good also um, against uh, depression. 
So okay. just a little from yogic point of view, because yoga and Ayurveda are brother and sister. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> um, if there is maybe one more question. Just I want to make one more suggestion to Dr. Chauhan. Uh, Tamara mentioned about the, the oil, the yes. pumpkin oil. Yes. Yeah, I would mention to you that uh, I think now it's about to change, but in during winter times, there is a yes. tradition of pumpkin soup. Yes, yes. And it is very tasty. From In India, we use pumpkin for as a vegetable. Yes, but yes. But here, the soup is the one that is exceptionally good. And yes. they serve it with a touch of uh, pumpkin oil so you um, get the pumpkin soup and with a touch of pumpkin oil so it's very healthy and especially in winter times it is very good for health so I think that is part of I would say Croatian or Austrian Ayurveda <laughs> yes thank you thank you thank you all the best may, thank you may I just say one more thing um, perhaps you can get the seeds from ash gourd and we try to to plant them in Croatia in in uh, warm season because ash gourd is so healthy. Yes, and, uh, and it, it's possible it could grow in Croatia. Yes, amazing. I know that there is one farmer who does um, a bitter gourd in Dalmatia. Uh -huh. Beautiful and um, yeah, um, we can't get those seeds, but you could perhaps get them for us. Definitely, I will get them for you. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you, oh, thank you very much, Your Excellency, Raj Marshivastava, and uh, Dr. Chitrangana for. Uh, giving us your blessing and we are very happy that you are in Croatia and to stay as long as possible because you have a lot to do <laughs> and uh, we will all uh, help you if anything you need we are here to help thank you. your activities <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you so much for the opportunity thank you thank you very much and uh, Hello, Eugenia, Thank everybody. You. <laughs> Thank you very much for this participation and see you next time. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.